When researchers compared group of honeybee hives treated with the popular varroa mite treatment in colonies in Georgia and Alabama, they were expecting to be pleased like many beekeepers already using the same system. However, what the researchers found ended up being a big surprise. The American beekeeping industry continually experienced colony mortality, with annual losses as high as 43% according to the Bee Informed Partnership. And a leading cause of this is the exotic ectoparasitic mite varroa destructor. Integrated pest management options are used to prevent mite populations from getting too high. However, because mites are becoming resistant to current treatments or there are not enough effective options available, new ways to control mites are necessary. Oxalic acid is commonly used by both commercial and backyard beekeepers to control varroa destructor. Applying vaporized oxalic acid inside a honeybee hive is a legal application method in the United States and results in the death of exposed mites. However, if mites are in the reproductive stage and therefore under the protective wax capping, oxalic acid is ineffective. To overcome this problem, one popular method of applying oxalic acid is vaporizing it multiple times over several weeks to reach mites hiding inside the brood cells. But does it work? The researchers randomly assigned almost 100 honeybee colonies to one of the two groups. The first group vaporized with 1 gram of oxalic acid per super every 5 days for 7 applications spread over 35 days to account for both the time to take for worker bees to develop, which is 21 days, and to drone bees to develop, which is 24 days. And group number 2, an untreated control group. These colonies were evaluated in three separate field trials, one in Auburn University in Alabama in 2020, and two additional ones at the University of Georgia in Athens, one in 2019 and another one in 2020. When the researchers evaluated the levels of varroa mite between these groups at the end of the experiments, the results were surprising. The untreated group in the Auburn field in 2020 showed a 10% increase in the percentage of mite intensity from the original number of mites found in these colonies at the beginning of the trial. Interestingly, the treated group maintained the same levels of mites found at the beginning of the study, no more, no less. This means that the treatment efficacy was strong enough to stop the growth of the mites but not to reduce it to a safer level. To simplify using a real-world example, if the untreated colonies start with 10 mites per 100 bees, they will end up with 11 mites per 100 bees. On the other hand, the treated colonies will maintain the same number of mites, 10 mites per 100 bees, which in my opinion, the treatment has failed. The second trial was similar to the first one. The untreated colonies increased by 5%, while the treated colonies decreased by 5%. In the third trial, which had more colonies than the other two trials combined, the untreated colonies did not increase or decrease, and the same happened to the treated colonies, basically confirming the findings of the previous two trials. This shows that the mite treatment widely used by beekeepers did not protect bees from mites in the conditions of this study. But the researchers didn't stop there. In the last trial, where there was no differences in mite levels in both the treated and untreated groups, and therefore eliminating any potential interference caused by varroa mites, the researchers evaluated if the treatment itself have had any negative effect on the bees. They look at adult bees, developing brood, and food stores. All these factors did not show any noticeable difference, which means that oxalic acid does not harm the bee colonies in the conditions used in this study. This confirms previous studies conducted by Dr. Cameron Jack at the University of Florida in Gainesville in 2020 and 2021, which we will discuss in future videos. Before this study conducted by Jennifer Berry from the Department of Entomology at the University of Georgia, Athens, there was only informal evidence that the popular oxalic acid vaporizing procedure done five days apart could effectively control varroa destructor. Based on these results, the authors do not suggest using this method for controlling varroa destructor when brood is present. So this is quite interesting. As I always say in this channel, any decision making procedure in beekeeping practices should not be based on anecdotal information or also in single scientific studies. Before making any decision, 
A lot of information should be considered to increase the chances of success. Beekeeping has too many variables. What is going on here? I know several beekeepers who report tremendous success using this method. And after looking at this controlled experiment, I become skeptical. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to the article so you can take a look at the details of the experiment yourself. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. What do you think? What is your experience using oxalic acid? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. There is a lot to talk about regarding this subject and something I'm hearing a lot about is the dosage and other variables that were not covered in this study. But don't worry, we work on several videos about this subject inside the academy. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please consider supporting my work, link in the description of this video. I would like to thank my members for their support and you for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about beasts. See you guys next week.